Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are back here with you for another weekly K-State football recruiting update. Kind of go over some of the notable things. It's a little bit of a slower time in some ways. We talked transfer portal last week uh, with some of the things that K-State's still trying to accomplish there. There are things that they are trying to get done, despite the fact that this is a roster that, as it currently sits, is one of the top in, in the Big 12, at least – that's what experts and odds makers tend to think, but they still want to get better there. So there are transfer portal things to monitor. You can do that over at K-State Online if you go find the On3 site. Now, high school recruiting-wise, class of 25 guys, where you're inching closer to getting official visits into full swing for K-State and also starting to see the refinement of certain positions in K-State's recruiting targets, whereas We've talked about offensive line already in this offseason about how, hey, we kind of know the two or three guys that they're looking for. They already got one of them in Will Kim, though. We talked about that on Friday. And then you look around some other spots. We'll talk receiver in this show, but let's start with a couple of defensive backs that you've been talking about for quite some time now, Drew. And we've brought up, uh, I know for a fact we brought up Leo Almanza's name here before, so we'll just start with him. Uh, what can you tell people about the Trophy Club Texas native? Yeah, Leo Almanza is a name that's kind of been on K-State's radar for a little bit. It looks like it's going to be a Big 12 battle, Texas Tech, Utah, K-State, Baylor. It's funny, including Utah in a, in a Big 12 battle. Yeah. But those are the four official visits that he has scheduled. And he's already actually taken the visit to Utah and went, and that just came and went in uncommitted and nothing really came out about where utah sits after the official visit which makes me think that it's probably texas tech baylor k-state and it's it's a big recruitment for k-state because i think that he's one of the top safeties on k-state's board right now he really fits what k-state wants to do at the safety position and, and there's the added benefit for k-state that he played uh like uh travel football and young football with uh dylan duff because he's originally from St. Louis. So it's another one where Casey has some ties to him already. So this is somebody that they really prioritized and they've been working really hard to get, even though he hasn't had his offer from Casey for very long. Casey has been recruiting him for a while. And I just think that he's probably what Casey would want as a safety in their uh, three, three, five defense. So looking at the the teams and the big players in this mix, you say, hey, you know, not not a ton came out of the Utah visit. That's probably good news for K-State. We know that Texas Tech is probably going to be a, a really strong competitor here because ever since Joey McGuire got there, they're, they're getting Texas kids of all calibers. I mean, if you go and look at the yeah. last two recruiting classes they've put together, it's not just, hey, these are the three stars that Texas and, and Texas A&M don't want they are getting the five stars and four stars that Texas and Texas A&M do want. So they're, if they want a guy, they're they are giving themselves every chance to do it. But that relationship that you bring up, that Almanza in connection with some of the other guys in this class that K-State's trying to get, seems like a really significant thing. Yeah, it's definitely not insignificant. I mean, if you look and read the article that we posted uh, about Weston Polk and his commitment and what kind of led into that, he mentions Leo Alonzo by name as a guy that he wants to bring to K-State. And Dylan Duff did the same thing when we talked to him about, like, okay, you're in. Like, who, are, who else are you trying to work on? So I think that that's something to really kind of keep in mind that this is a big-time priority target for K-State. And you said Texas Tech, probably somebody to watch as well. And I would agree with that. And he's actually going to be in Lubbock right before he goes to Manhattan. His visit for Texas Tech is uh, June 4th through the 6th. And he, his visit at K-State starts June 7th. So I think that that's probably the top two schools. I think that Baylor is really in contention. Utah, if the longer this plays out, Utah probably fades back because his official visit to Utah was April 13th. Like we're we're talking that he has official visits scheduled up until June twenty first. So the yeah, longer this plays time. out, Utah probably so Utah probably out of it the longer that this plays out. Uh, he'll be at Baylor June fourteenth. And then Houston June twenty first. I just don't know how much of a threat Houston is at the moment. So I, I would probably say it's Baylor, K State, Texas Tech. 
probably a decent barometer for where the the Willie Fritz Houston thing is at yeah. right now. I, I think it's I think it will get there at some point to where Houston's not going to be one that you kind of laugh off. But at this point in time, uh, there certainly seem to be some other indicators. And I think you think of the overall health of the teams that we've discussed here, where where K State, Texas Tech, and Utah all seem to be in really good places. Baylor. People know how I feel about Dave Aranda, uh, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one that can see it, especially after he had the season he had a season ago. So I, I think it seems like we we know where this is going. The RPM is sorting itself out as well with Texas Tech and K-State right there. I mean, K-State and Tech are closer to each other than K-State is to Utah, the third-place team. That seems to be a pretty realistic setup. Now, Almanza only has his rating from, from 24-7 currently. He's a three-star there. As a player and and where you can project this, where do you think that all sorts itself out? Because that stuff still matters to people. I think that he'll still end up be he'll end up being in the higher three star ranking. I, I think that he's really, really athletic. I mean, he plays corner in high school and case it's moving him to safety, which is something that we saw um this past fall. And we've seen this kind of be a transition for K State especially because Josh Hayes moved from corner to safety. Mar- Marquise Siegel has been a corner then to safety. So I think that K-State's really hunting athletes and moving them from corner to safety. And I think that's something that you really need to do in the 3-3-5, especially because your free safety is essentially another corner on the field, but it doesn't have that distinction. All right, well, then let's move to another guy that's currently listed as a corner, but could be in that same boat. Uh, we'll get serious about this topic. Sirius Stenyard uh, is a player out of Florida, and we've seen since Chris Kleiman came to K-State an uptick in some of the guys that they've been able to get from the state of Florida, the interest there. And I think one of the fascinating things, you see the some of the offers that he has at the bottom, how different they are between Almanza and Stenyard, because a lot of times you'll see these Big 12 schools, they're all interested in the same guys. And there's crossover where this is another one that has Big 12 interest with KU and West Virginia with offers put in there, but none of the same schools that are going after Almanza, K-State is in on. So K-State's kind of the connecting link there. Uh, what do you make of the player from South Florida? Uh, he's another guy, just kind of like Leo Almanza, where he's a super, super good athlete and can, and I would think that he has a 4-4 four, four, or 4-5 four, 40 yard dash. Oh yeah, it's actually 4-3-5. So undersold him a little bit. And runs a 10 8 100. So he's a really, really good athlete. And as somebody that, again, can fit either the free safety role or maybe he could even play strong safety. But it, it's one where you see K State recruiting really good athletes on defense and just figuring it out, figuring out the position later, especially in the secondary. Because I mean, I, I made, I've made the joke a few times that K State's corner and safety room, if they ran like a four by one, could go toe to toe with a lot of other schools because K State finds guys that are really good at track and have really good speed and just kind of develop them and figure it out later. Jacob Parrish is the perfect example. I mean, he ran like a 10, 4, 10, 5, 100 in the in the state meet as a senior. Yeah, that's uh that's that's pretty good. Pretty good speed there. And that this kind of fits the mold too of guys that we've seen uh the the climbing regime go after where now, I think that there's a little bit more to Stenyard in the position that he's already at and how that works out. But a lot of it we've seen, hey, get a get an athlete and somebody that's capable of playing in the Big 12, and we'll figure out where to put them when they get here. So I, I think that's probably one of the notable things. And the speed is a is a big deal because you can never have enough of that uh, when you're you're playing at the power four level now in college football. So those are some of the defensive backs to keep an eye on. Now let's shift the focus to receiver because this is another spot where I think receiver and running back kind of similar, a pretty good pool of names out there right now for K-State that they I think equal interest amongst yeah. everybody. Um, and it's just going to probably come down to, is there some way that over the course of the next month and a half, you set yourself apart from some of the other guys, which is almost impossible because they're not playing games, you know, all these different things are going on. And are you going to be one of the first guys to take that spot? The spots are open and when they're gone, they're gone. 
Yeah, it, it really does look kind of like a race because there's right now four uh, wide receivers that have official visits. Cartarius Brown from Arlington, Texas. So another Texas kid. Uh, Isaiah Mizell, another Florida kid. And then uh, Gia Richardson from Arizona. And then Adonis uh, Moyes from uh, actually IMG Academy in Florida. So you're seeing Kasich kind of recruiting all over the map uh, for receiver spots. And I think that you're starting to see what Matthew Middleton wants in a receiver because, you know, we we've had so much turnover at receiver coach at K state in the last six or seven years that when Matthew Middleton took over last year, that he was a fifth receiver coach in six years. So you kind of have a combination of bodies and you don't really know what Matthew Middleton wants. And the thing that I think that you can really see what he wants in a receiver is somebody that's explosive after the catch. And all four of those guys can be really explosive after the catch and are really good athletes. Um, so I think that that's something to really kind of keep an eye on for future receivers is, okay, they want somebody that's in that, that six foot, six one, six two range that can really, really run and really make people miss and are really elusive after the catch. I mean, we, we saw that with uh, Jaquez Bradley Dimps, who I said his probably best trait was catching the ball and making plays after that. And then uh, Trey Davis is a really good track athlete. So that's another guy that when he touches the ball, like you got to look out for. So I think that we're starting to see what Middleton wants. And I think that that's really exciting because having consistency in the receiver room is something that hasn't happened at K-State in a really long time. Yeah, no, that's that's the truth there. I mean, well, and Matthew Middleton is a large part of that. So it, do you expect the revolving door receivers coach to keep on going, or does it seem like Matthew Middleton is in a pretty good spot for K State moving forward? It seems like Matthew Middleton is in a pretty good spot at K State going forward. He has Kansas ties already, which I think helps. And I just think that he really, really likes the job in Manhattan and is really appreciative of Chris Kleiman for giving him the opportunity. And and it was actually Colin Klein was one of the guys that was really involved with hiring him as well but i think they're seeing him i think that he wants to kind of establish and really kind of get back to uh being back Kansas. yeah i think i think it's good to see that the consistency is starting to develop a little bit there for k-state and that's probably one of the bigger deals moving forward yeah, last year when middleton came in it, you think about how many guys they've cycled through at that position it's not just a matter of losing guys here and there to different things. They've reshuffled the coaching staff on the roster to where this guy is going to move over here. And so then you have a new position coach. Consistency is a really big deal. And uh, we've seen K-State really establish it in most parts of this staff. Receiver is about the only position group that uh, they've had like a different coach every other year. So we'll see what that ends up looking like moving forward. So, I mean – we talk numbers a lot when we when it comes down to recruiting in this class. Are you confident that K State gets to a spot with receiver numbers in the class that they're comfortable with, and they do it with guys that they really want, as opposed to yeah, we just kind of took this guy to take him, which you know has happened at times. It happens in every recruiting class. Um, I don't, you know, I think last year's. I don't think it was like that all that much. I think they got some guys they really want and we seem to think are going to turn out to be okay, but even the class prior to that. So where, where do you think things stack up to where K-State's trending here? I think K-State's trending in a pretty good spot. I think that uh, all four of the guys coming in, I think that K-State's a really big contender for. And uh, Moyes was really excited about uh, if he was in K-State and had an official visit scheduled even like two days after he visited in the spring. So I think that that's re that's really one to watch and one to be aware of. Isaac Mizell barely hold, held an offer from K State. I think his offer was like a couple of days old, and he immediately scheduled an official visit to K State. So I think that he's somebody to really kind of hone in on and watch. And then uh, Cartarius Brown is another one where K State's really probably one of the top two, top three teams. And Gia Richardson, K State's also in the top two, top three, four. So I think that they're in a good spot for all four of the receivers. So I'm really interested to see what the priority list is for K-State because you probably don't need all four. You probably only need two or three. Yeah, and I think it'll be a race. And if 
K State can sort it out themselves too, uh, and see how this this all pans out. So that's uh, the latest on K State football recruiting. We'll start to have more over the, the next couple of weeks because official visits will kick up in earnest, and uh, we'll probably have some significant updates there. Get a better idea of where K State's trending on everything. So we'll have that in next week's football recruiting update, along with some other things. And uh, you can always get up to the minute K-State football recruiting news over at kstateonline.com. Plenty of other things going on over there right now because uh, the basketball team, they're still looking to find guys that can actually play basketball next year for them. So that's something that's uh, on tap right now and uh, lots of good vibes with K-State football for this coming season. So we'll have uh, plenty of analysis of that as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back again tomorrow to talk a little bit about the Big 12 and what's coming up for its future.